Hi, this is Nick. Welcome to ISG, where we talk all things real estate in the Czech Republic. Today, we're going to continue looking at ChatGPT's ideas for property investment areas in Prague. I'll start off by recapping the four areas that were earmarked in the previous video and let you know if I agree or disagree. Prague 7, Holoshevitsa. Strongly agree. It's hard to see why Prague 7 won't continuously develop and why prices won't continuously rise there. You've got geographical factors like the river, you've also got a lot of brownfield sites still that can be renovated, and you've got lots of other great areas there like the parks and metro. So it's hard to see why this wouldn't really work out as a long-term plan. Prague 8. Disagree. Although Prague 8, and Carlin especially, has been really, really well developed in recent years and prices have risen a lot there, it feels like it's starting to run out of speed a little bit. Of course, there is new, more space for new developments, but there's a lot of competition from other areas as well. I think once we get out towards Palmovka, it starts to lose its kind of place within, within investment field. Prague 9, disagree. Although I do see the potential of the area with more and more developments being made there, it always has concerned me that there is a real lack of amenities in the area. This still concerns me today, and I wonder whether it's sort of overdone in this area now. Prague 10, Vershevitsa, agree. There was a lot of hype before, and I expect this hype to return again. Lots of the old buildings in a style like Vinaradi are kind of hard to ignore. I think if there's lots of new development in the area, that would really help things. But right now, there isn't too much. But still, I think there's a lot of potential there. What I feel that ChatGPT missed were a couple of areas that I'd like to talk about now. Prague 3, Zhishkov. Now, Zhishkov's always been a bit of an unloved sun within Prague, and it's a place where prices have been very, very low compared with the location within the city. What we've seen recently is lots of new development in the area, around the football stadium, up towards the old freight railway station, and also along streets like Konyarova, now Hartigova, where there are lots of infills being made. There was a lot of enthusiasm about the area before, and it was kind of lost, but I really feel that now it's finally happening, there's going to be a lot of positives happening in this area, and it looks like somewhere good to invest for the future. Prague 5, Smikov. What's happening in Smikov now with these new developments around Smikov City is very similar to what happened in Karlin. We're seeing a similar area, there's already a metro in place, it's near the river. We're going to see it change, and it's going to be unrecognizable in a few years' time. And to me, it kind of has now the same kind of potential that Karlin did back then. And it will certainly try to challenge Carleen for that kind of title in the future. It's this kind of development that makes me slightly concerned for places like Prague 8 continuing to expand because there's going to be so much happening in Prague 5. So I think it's very interesting. I think it's definitely a good one for the future. Prague 4. The buzz around the new metro has mainly disappeared, but it is happening right now. For me, the new metro is likely to give it a new lease of life, similar to what we saw in Prague 6 and before it in Prague 9, with new developments around those areas. With prices some of the lowest in the city, I see plenty of potential for future investment. That's all from me. Thanks very much for watching. See you again soon.